It was the kind of property where we needed to share it. It was just so amazing and so beautiful. And we really felt God's presence there in such a strong way that you have no choice but to share that. It was a special place. We knew for a fact that the what we called Red Hawk Ranch, which is now the sanctuary, we knew that land was special. We knew it was it was it had really been set aside. We realized what a beautiful spot that was and a perfect location. So we chose to, to build the house there. We almost knew as we were building it that it wasn't going to be for us forever, even though we called it our forever home. We almost felt like it was for a greater purpose. Uh, Andrew Womack saw that property and he had told me he had driven by for years and years coming, coming down from the mountains through Woodland Park. None of us would have known what God had in store for it. Dad was a visionary. His ideas for, the, for properties in general were different from your average developer or property owner. He owned a lot of property in Houston and Texas and also in Colorado. When I met Gilbert Jackson, he was everything I thought he would be. He was uh, very intellectual. He was um, extremely smart, highly educated, successful. He did not connect any kind of spiritual aspect to his business dealings at all. He intellectualized it from an early age and, and, and up to the very end, uh, I couldn't ever imagine um, actually having a conversation about the person of Jesus um, in his life and even our lives. So he accepted us uh, with our beliefs and our, and our um, what he would probably describe it maybe as a crutch. Uh, he, didn't need, he didn't need Jesus, we did. We wanted to honor God by using these beautiful properties for God's glory. Dad did not see it that way, you know, but we were able to do that anyway before he died. And I think he saw that, you know, in our hearts as well, but he didn't join in right away with that until the very end. In 1992, Dad uh, came down with cancer, had colon cancer, and he had surgery, chemo and radiation, the whole bit. One of the ladies that came to work um, as one of the nurses not only was a fabulous cook that we all benefited from, but she was just an angel. She was a, a believer and um, she uh, was able to be there the night of his 74th birthday. She said, Mr. Jackson, there's just one thing I know you're missing. And he was like, what? You're holding out on me? You have some secret that I don't know? And uh, she, she told me later, she said, I wasn't prepared, I wasn't prepared. She said, but God just gave me the words. Never in a million years my, uh, in my mind would I think that Merlene uh, and Gilbert would have this relationship where she didn't convince him of anything other than to show him who Jesus was and how to how to attain that salvation. Marlene said she just kept, you know, repeating scripture and whatever would God would put on her heart to say. And he literally visualized Jesus standing in the door, extending his hand to him um, to step through the door and become a believer. And dad argued with Jesus because he said, I'm not worthy. I'm, I've done, you know, bad things and not been a great person and those kind of things. And, Jesus, of course, said, it doesn't matter. Step through this door, and, and he did. He took Jesus' hand, and he stepped through that door, and the rest is history. Upon dedicating his life to the Lord, Gilbert also dedicated his properties. He had always been a strong advocate of education, but after his conversion, his only desire was that people learn to know Jesus. With only 11 days to live, the Little Stars celebrated with Debbie's father his new way of life and his new way of thinking. At the same time, halfway around the world in England, God spoke to Andrew Womack about starting Karis Bible College. 
After what Dad called his conversion experience, um, when we discussed the properties, he had always talked about his properties in a very business-like way. Now his focus had changed and he said, these properties need to be put together and used for Christian uses, Christian endeavors, Christian education. He was a big into education. Mark and I had lived in Woodland Park for several years uh, and in different areas and after Dad died, um, uh, we received that property. Uh, we decided to build a house out there. That's where we wanted to be all the time. So we made plans to build the big house and it took about 10 months, I think, to build it. We had a wonderful experience. Some friends of ours that knew we were building had some missionary friends come visit them and they said, could we come out and see the property? And we said, sure. And um, we had broken ground, but it wasn't real far underway yet. And they were missionaries and they just said, you know what, can we just pray for y'all? We said, absolutely. What well, was their idea for the four of us to face in four different directions, north, south, east, and west, and back to back, we were back to back facing in those directions, and we prayed for that property. They prayed and we prayed for the property, for the construction, just for God to bless it, for God to use it as He would have His way with it. And uh, it was a very powerful moment for Mark and I. We, we did say that it's our forever and ever house, and yet we somehow, God had started putting on us that this was never for us in the first place, but we were supposed to build it. Deb had, Deb had, had a, a dream that, that we had been equipped and we had everything we, we needed to, to move God's kingdom forward with the uh, things that Gilbert had passed on to us and passed down to us. In 1999, Mark and I had decided with our girls that we needed to move back to Texas to be closer to our families. So um, we decided to sell the property and the Sturmans bought the property from us. Carol and Eddie had known that we had used the property in special ways in the past. We, they knew that it was a very special property and that our desire for it was that it should be used and shared. Then they ended up uh, selling the property to Andrew Womack Ministries. And um, evidently when uh, the Andrew Womack Ministries was inquiring about the property, the Sturmans had said, oh, the Little Stars will be very happy to know this, that there are going to be a Bible college here and that there will be people from all over the world enjoying this property and this home. And um, it just was a win-win situation for everyone, for them, for us, for Andrew Womack, and for all of God's people that, will, that have been there and will be there in the future. The Little Stars now realized that their father's vision for the property was coming true, even down to a Christian education building he had seen in his final hours, a structure that would have glass walls so the students could see the beauty of Pikes Peak. Throughout the design process of the sanctuary, Andrew knew nothing of Gilbert's vision. But as his plans were made public, the Little Stars could see that God had planted Gilbert's vision in the mind of Andrew Womack revealing his hand in the entire process. So we get a, I get a call from Andrew, and he introduced himself. We had heard that a ministry was buying it, but Andrew called me on my cell phone, and, and it was one of those special conversations. It was sort of like, in only a God way, uh, this happened. I started sharing with, with Andrew, really, the history of this property. And of course, Deb and I are, are ecstatic that we couldn't have dreamed this. We couldn't have uh, sat down on a whiteboard or a yellow legal pad as we used to with Gilbert and, and figured this out. It was, it, there was too many variables. There were too many unknowns. There was no way we could have ever imagined this happening. And yet, um, in that phone call, um, it just hit me and then hit us that uh, God, God did this and He continues to do this. One person, uh, Merlene, changed one person Gilbert. It only takes one person with a little faith and uh, some courage to go out and change the world. So that's our prayer for uh, not only our own lives, but for the ministry of Andrew Womack and Karis Bible College, that everyone that walks and rides and drives through those gates and sits in those sessions will know that it just takes one person to change the world. In, in looking back and reflecting on 
where this property has come from. Um, before we had it, while we had it, and as it's passed on. To see now that all these people through Andrew Warmick Ministries, the, the lessons that are being taught, the lives that are being changed, the ripple effect of all of that is mind-boggling. It's just really overwhelming to think and to see God's hand so clearly moving. And you know, we pray for things and we expect things, and maybe in our lifetime we see them and maybe we don't, but in our lifetime we're seeing the hand of God clearly using that property for His ultimate glory, and what a beautiful thing. The stories that come out of it, the healing that comes out of it, the blessings, not only for those students, but for the, the people that those students will then go and change because of the, what they've experienced in that place. It's, it's a beautiful thing. God is so good. He is so good.